Aye. Contrary, if any? I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The next item of business is a motion from the Assembly Commission to nominate a Northern Ireland Public Services Ombudsman. I'd ask the clerk to please read the motion. That this Assembly, in accordance with Section 3.1 of the Public Services Ombudsman Act, Northern Ireland 2016, nominates Margaret Kelly for appointment as the Northern Ireland Public Services Ombudsman. Thank you. I call Mr Robbie Butler to move the motion on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Mr Butler. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The Public Service Ombudsman Act 2016 delegates to the Assembly Commission. Um, Mr Butler, if you just move it, because of some business that I, some house rules, so I'll count that as having been moved. Um, the Business Committee has agreed to allow up to 30 minutes for this debate. The proposer will have 10 minutes to propose the motion and 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. I now call Mr Butler to open the debate on the motion. Mr Butler. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. You could say I'm a slow learner at times. <laughs> it actually says it on my papers. Just choose to ignore it. The Public Service Ombudsman Act 2016 delegates to the Assembly Commission the responsibility for determining the criteria for appointment and making arrangements to identify by fair and open competition a person to be nominated by the Assembly for the role of Ombudsman. The appointment of the Ombudsman is by royal warrant and is for a single period of seven years. And like the whole House, when it established the Ombudsman's office, the Assembly Commission believes that the Ombudsman carries out an important and effective function in ensuring that there are free, independent and impartial services for handling complaints about public services here in Northern Ireland. Good governance and oversight are important in enabling us all to be confident that our public bodies are carrying out their function in a fair and transparent manner. In addition, the Ombudsman can initiate investigations when there is a reasonable suspicion of maladministration or in the case of health and social care, where there is a reasonable suspicion of systemic injustice. The Ombudsman also performs the role of the Northern Ireland Judicial Appointments Ombudsman and Local Government Commissioner for Standards. Members will recall that shortly after the resumption of Assembly business in January of this year, the Assembly nominated an acting Ombudsman, Mr Paul McFadden, to ensure that this important role did not stay vacant until such time as the rec recruitment competition for the Office of Ombudsman was completed. And I would thank Mr McFadden uh, for undertaking the role of acting Ombudsman during what has been a challenging period. Mr Deputy Speaker, members, the recruitment process involved uh, myself, Mr O'Dowd, the Clerk, Chief Executive, and Rosemary Agnew, the Scottish Public Service Ombudsman. And I would like to place on, my, on record my thanks to, uh, to Ms. Agnew for her insight and her willingness to help the Commission with this competition. I am delighted to inform the House that the recruitment competition has now been concluded and that Margaret Kelly was identified as the successful candidate. And members may know Ms. Kelly from her active work in the voluntary and community sector over these past 30 years. She is an honours graduate in politics and economics from Queen's University and also holds a master's degree from Bristol University in social science with a focus on racism and ethnic minority communities. Ms Kelly has a wealth of experience in working with children, young people and families and has held senior roles in many children's and families organisations since September 2015. She has been the director of MENCAP Northern Ireland and during this time she has been responsible for developing a range of early intervention services for children with a learning disability and their families. She has worked with children, adults and families with a learning disability to ensure the needs of those with a learning disability have a higher priority with public services. Ms Kelly has worked with the Assembly and a range of departments on the development and improvement of both policy and practice. She also has extensive experience in commissioning, managing and publishing research as well as ensuring that an evidence base underpins both policy and practice. Mr Deputy Speaker, before I finish, I want to record the Assembly's thanks to the former Ombudsman, Marie Anderson, for her work as the first ever public, public service Ombudsman for Northern Ireland. Today, the Commission seeks the Assembly's agreement to the nomination of Margaret Kelly as a public service Ombudsman, and I have no doubt that Margaret's skills and experience will enable, enable her to be, to be an excellent Ombudsman, and I commend her nomination to this House. Thank you. I call Ms Joanne Bunting. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. 
I rise today as the Deputy Chairperson of the Audit Committee. As members will be aware, the Audit Committee plays an important role in scrutinising and agreeing the budgets and estimates of the Northern Ireland Public Service Ombudsman, as well as the Northern Ireland Audit Office, and more recently in relation to the Assembly Commission. Although the appointment of the Ombudsman is responsibility for the Assembly Commission to manage, the Audit Committee does have an important relationship with the Ombudsman. At its meeting on, the 13th, on Thursday the 13th of February 2020, the Audit Committee received a briefing from the Northern Ireland Public Services Ombudsman's Office. One of the issues raised at this meeting was the vacancy within the Ombudsman's Office and the impact of that vacancy on the work of NIPSO as a whole. At that time, members noted that the nomination and in turn the formal appointment of the Acting Ombudsman would be for a period extending no longer than the, the, the first anniversary of the vacancy of Ombudsman arising, that is, up to the 15th of July 2020, or until the appointment of a successor Ombudsman. Members were keen that this risk was addressed and the post of Ombudsman filled before this deadline expired. And consequently, the committee agreed to write to the Assembly Commission to request a timetable for the recruitment and appointment of the Northern Ireland Public Services Ombudsman. The Speaker replied to the committee, indicating that the Commission had been prioritising the vacancy in the Office of the Ombudsman and had agreed on the urgency to appoint a new Ombudsman, giving the time limits on the powers of the Acting Ombudsman. And I think I win the prize for the number of Ombudsmen mentioned in one paragraph. The Committee also noted that the Commission would be proceeding with a recruitment competition to facilitate the appointment of an Ombudsman, the result of which is this motion and nomination which we have before us today. I expect the other members of the Audit Committee, like me, will be pleased to see the vacancy in the office addressed and look forward to engaging with the new Ombudsman as the Committee continues to progress its work with NIPSO. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mr Jim Allister. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I'm not very familiar with the um, history and work of Margaret Kelly, uh, so anything I say is not to be taken to reflect upon her capacities and abilities. Um, I did not hear uh, anything in her background which indicated that she has any legal expertise. I think that given that very often the Ombudsman's function involves quasi-judicial functions in terms of reaching judgments and assessing evidence, and all of that, that it might have been advantageous to have had someone of such a background. Uh, we haven't been told, and I'd like to know, how many applicants there were for the post and uh, how many were interviewed. Um, the Ombudsman has a right to self-initiate investigations. And I'd like to suggest to Ms Kelly the first investigation she should initiate is into recent events in Belfast City Council, where there appears to have been gross maladministration in terms of the selective preference given to one applicant family in terms of the use of the crematorium over others. And I think Belfast City Council needs to be strongly held to account in respect of its administration of that matter. How is it that eight families on Tuesday were denied the privileges, the rights, and it turns out the overnight change in the law that no one was told about? How is it that eight families were denied all of that and one family was afforded those special treatments. Mr. Allister. That surely, Principal Deputy Speaker, is a matter of maladministration. Mr. Allister, the subject under discussion presently is about the appointment of an Ombudsman. I appreciate that your comments relate to the functions of the Ombudsman's Office, and you've got them on the record. I'm happy to let you resume, but I think it's important that you come back to the appointment of an individual. That's what's under discussion here. Mr. Allister. I thought I was because I was talking about the function whereby the Ombudsman can initiate investigations. 
and I was giving Miss Kelly some advice as to what she might initiate an investigation about, but the point's there. I think it's crying out for investigation. When the Commission come to reply, could they also tell us what progress they've made on the appointments of a standards commissioner for this House? A long, outstanding vacancy. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mr Roy Beggs. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. I rise to indicate my welcome for this proposal and support for the appointment of Margaret Kelly as a Northern Ireland uh, uh, Ombudsman. I first got to know uh, Margaret, it must be almost a couple of decades ago, uh, when she was then policy officer of Bernardo's, one of the biggest uh, children's charity in Northern Ireland. Uh, through that, she had close involvement uh, with uh, assembly members, public representatives, and indeed had close involvement with uh, government officials, uh, and particularly in the D Department of Health. And when I, I myself was uh, chair of the All Party Group for Children and Young People, uh, I found that there was very measured and knowledgeable advice coming forward. Margaret subsequently became the Chief Executive Officer of MENCAP, uh, one of our largest charities in Northern Ireland, uh, caring for those in, in need of support. Uh, she has uh, shown her professionalism there, uh, and I have no doubt that in the role of Assembly Ombudsman, she will act in the best interest of the Northern Ireland public and hopefully assist in providing a better administration to all the people of Northern Ireland. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mr. Colum Gildernew. Yeah, I would also like to welcome the appointment of Margaret Kelly to this very, very important role. I have worked with Margaret on a number of issues in relation to her work on the APGs here and also in her role in MENCAP. And I think her insights into the difficulties faced by carers and families struggling with, with uh, very difficult situations will be something that is of, of great value to her in the role. And I think that perspective will be something that the public, the, the Ombudsman, will benefit from. Um, I also would like to wish Marie Anderson, who I worked with on a number of issues also uh, well in, in, in her future, and to acknowledge that she did make the Ombudsman, I believe, more accessible to families and to people who are, who are badly in need of representation. There is a major issue in terms of health and social care complaint systems, and I think the Public Ombudsman could have a very, very key role in the time ahead. Thank you. No other member has indicated to me that they wish to speak. So, uh, in order to wind on behalf of the Assembly Commission uh, and conclude this debate, I call Mr. John O'Dowd. Uh, and I welcome the contributions from the members. Uh, in relation to a number of, of the questions raised by Mr. Allister, uh, all those who were interviewed met the criteria of the post as advertised. Um, I have a figure in my head of the number of candidates who were interviewed, but I don't want to give the House the wrong figure, um, and that can be supplied to. Mr. Allister, and, and put on the record as well uh, of, of the number of candidates who were uh, interviewed for this job. And I welcome the fact that there was a significant number of applications, and a significant number of those applicants met the criteria for interview as well. So it, it was welcome to see that. But I want to reiterate the point made by my Commission colleague, uh, Mr. Butler, in recognising the assistance provided by the recruitment panel by the Scottish Public Service Ombudsman, uh, Rosemary McNee. Her expertise and input were invaluable as we sought to identify the best candidate for the post of Ombudsman. And, Principal Deputy Speaker, I feel that we have done that. Uh, I sincerely believe that Margaret Kelly will be a highly effective Ombudsman who will help to ensure that public services can be delivered in the best possible way for all our citizens and held to account for all our citizens. I would urge members from across the House to support uh, the motion. I commend it to the House. Thank you, Mr. O'Dowd. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, if any. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. If members could just take their ease for a few moments. Uh, the next item is uh, executive business, uh, but the minister isn't presently here. So if we just take our ease until he arrives, that would be great. Thank you.